do my best. Um, I'm Jeff Wolf, and I've been inventing, I don't know, since school. I've always had a bit of a nuts mind. Um, and a few years ago, actually a long time ago now, about 2012, when the uh, so-called Boris bikes came to London, which was a bike rental scheme, um, I noticed that most people weren't wearing helmets, like over 90%. I thought it was nuts, because many years ago, like 20-something years ago, I had a really bad bike smash and I, uh, my life was saved because I was wearing a helmet, no doubt about it. I still broke my shoulder on my nose and broke some ribs, broke some ribs and, yeah. but anyway. Um, so I, I wanted to find out why and I started uh, a market research campaign. We interviewed cyclists and we found by far the majority said the reason they're not wearing a helmet, this is over 93% I think, was because they didn't want to lug one around all day because it's like lugging around a bowling ball in terms of size. It's a bit, you know, there's nowhere to put them really. Yeah. And the second reason was they just felt, they just felt it was too cumbersome all the time to have a helmet. Um, one of our questions was, you know, do you realize your life's in danger, potentially, by not wearing a helmet? And they said, yes, they did realize that. But they were kind of willing to take the risk. I mean, this is a bit mad, really. Yeah. Um, so I said about trying to make a folding helmet. And it took a long, long time, well, it's taken years and years and years to get there but we're there now we've sold I don't know 5,000 so far around the world and it's really you know it's taken off really nicely yeah and people tend to love it we're getting some great feedback so <laughs> and could you sort of show me how how, sure. how the mechanism works I mean this is the helmet itself and you can see it's a it's light like any other helmet and it's very small and to open it I just go like that it's really magical click here and here click here and here and that is now ready to wear and say fully certified for use around pretty much all of the world um, and uh, a very safe and very comfortable helmet to wear yeah. and um, I think it looks probably okay on as well so like so and then this this is very nice this uh, catch just basically you hold it there and it catches so it's magnetic takes off with one hand even with gloves on and just goes on again just like that just catches like that and then to take when you take the helmet off you just do that, it's that quick to close, wow. Less, way less than a second yeah. to close it. Uh, so it's and that open. can easily enough fit into most sort of laptop bags. Yeah, I, I keep it along with my laptop in a pretty slim laptop case, yeah, yeah, it fits, you know, it's a very thin profile. Yeah. Um, so that's really, that's really the product yeah. itself. Okay, what sort of, um, do you know what the weight is? Yeah, the weight I believe is about I think it's a little under 300 grams. I think it's about 275 grams or thereabouts. I can't swear to that. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just left me the exact. But anyway, it's about, uh, yeah, it's under 300 grams, which is under half a pound. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of the. Sorry, under a pound. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Sorry. Um, that's right. Uh, so, in terms of the sort of the safety features of it, it's got the reflective. Uh, it's got a very back. high, yeah, a very high. Uh, uh, get the word very uh, very extremely reflective I th yep. I'm not gonna <laughs> right. an extremely reflective sticker that shows up for about 200 meters uh, under bright headlights we're we're looking at all sorts of other lights and so on that will be on our yeah. mark 2 helmet but for now yes it's got that light there obviously there's a range of different colors yep. some show up better at night some show up worse at night but basically as long as you've got that on I mean I'd say to any cyclist just like wearing a helmet's important You've got to have lights. You yes, know, it's, it's yeah. mad not, absolutely mad not to. Just as it's mad to cycle without one of these things. Yes. <laughs> um, um, and then uh, there's a little bit of flex in the helmet, isn't there? But that's yep. a good thing, I believe. Oh, it's a great thing. Yeah. I mean, SGS, who are the testing company that um, certified this, uh, the examiner there, and also other people who've looked at it uh, from an examination point of view, love the fact that there's some flex in the helmet because what it means is it kind of conforms to head shapes more easily. So whether you're a, sort of from an Asian origin, Chinese style origin, where you've got a very round head, or whether you're, you're European when your head is kind of thinner, and um, this, will, this will fit very well. And the, and the flex means that if, God forbid, you have an accident, more of the helmet is going to be in contact with your skull, yeah. which means that the uh, impact force is going to get spread out more evenly good. and quickly. So, so the flex is actually a good thing. Um, and we've got lots of other technologies within here. But um, should I should I talk about? Yeah, those yeah, or? definitely. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of the folding action you can probably see. I don't know if you can, but there's we've got a kind of dog leg arrangement whereby if you had two bits of 
polystyrene as in a normal helmet and tried to fold it you've got two very thick lumps and it ends up with a thick helmet as it were so what I've done is I've designed it so that the bits interleave when it's folded so that actually you instead of being this thick you're this thick so you can see evidence of that inside here um, just by looking here and here and here okay so, so yeah so you can see that there uh, so it's, uh, it's a, yeah. yeah so that's what helps us to get this very thin profile and that's part of the pattern process that I had to go through and that's part of what makes it patentable and safe yeah. um, is that and then we've got uh, some other bits of technology in there that aren't obvious to the unaided eye but one can see that there's kind of a hinging mechanism here and that's not just simple strips of hinge it's actually it's made up of something like this this is actually inside every helmet molded is this piece okay this is a white one but it's generally black when molded and it's very sophisticated it doesn't necessarily look it but it's tested to it's a very special material and we've tested it for 50,000 openings and closings with no degradation of quality um, it's got some very sort of sophisticated bits that we stick on here as well which is all part of the hinging hinging mechanism yeah. I mean it's taken a long long time to get it right and to get it through testing obviously if you think about it well, getting a normal helmet through testing is is challenging but to do it when it's going to fold flat it's particularly yeah. challenging and so the clips have to be very strong and firm and uh, there has to be a lot of integrity to the helmet for yeah. it to work properly and um, one of the sort of the most exciting things I think mm -hmm. uh, about this is that it is a legitimate folding helmet I mean, there's some that you see on the market where it starts off this size and when it's folded it's that size yeah um, it's, it's lost so sort of 20 percent of it yeah. whereas this is a proper, it's really proper fold, fold it? properly yeah I mean <coughs> there's no doubt that there's a there's a marketplace for the folding helmet and there's bound to be competitors and there are no one is folding anywhere near this flat at all I mean we, we are a flat folding helmet which means it's very easy to carry as you say there are other helmets that there's one that's by uh, quite a large company that uh, in fact it's a, it's a Carrera one that folds by about I mean they even it folds about 20% not to 20% of its size but it loses about 20% so it's still quite big when it's folded it's a bit like a bunch of bananas that folds in a bit there's another helmet that um, uh, the over eight that um, basically folds down but it becomes a lump it's sort of an unwieldy lump in my opinion I think the point of a folding helmet is you want to be able to slip it into something like a book or a laptop or you know or, or, or for kids to put it into a rucksack behind their books I mean that's the point of me trying to make this flat yeah. folding helmet and I think we're the only one that does that and um, so from a obviously more and more cities are becoming connected and you're able to for example get the train in and then hire a bike mm -hmm. or pick one up off the side of the street yeah. and get going um, and is that who these sorts of helmets are targeted towards? Well that's where my original market was as I said it was definitely for these higher bikes and in fact when I started doing this there were 350 cities in the world with these kind of bike schemes bike shares um, now there's over a thousand five years later I mean it's gone absolutely exponential and of course more bikes are being sold than cars now in Europe and the US and all over yeah. the world and so what's basically happened is it started out as something for these bike rental schemes you know these bike share schemes and it still applies there but we've had out of the 5,000 people who bought a Morpher helmet so far they're from all sorts of walks of life they're people with folding bikes with Bromptons with all sorts of folding bikes who just want folding kit commuters who drive to the station and then well, uh, sorry cycle to the station or drive but cycle to the station get on the train they want a folding helmet they get off the other end and they take a, a bike share so there's those commuters there's all sorts of people there's even weekend warriors now there's all sorts of yeah. cyclists who like the fact that they can have a helmet that's very slim and small and packs away and when you look at students in particular I mean there's all these kids going off to university for the first time and uh, they cycle because it's cheap and yep. effective and keeps you healthy and fit and um, many of them don't wear helmets because again they're too cumbersome but I'm hoping that this is going to slowly help the behaviour of helmets change. Yeah and um, as you've alluded to it's been going for a few years can you talk a little bit about the journey that you've gone through? Oh. I believe it started about 2013 or so in terms of crowdfunding but I'm sure it started yeah. well before that. Oh it started well before that but the crowdfunding yeah I knew I needed to find a way to fund it. I had a friend who put some money in at the beginning um, but I needed to get some significant money I thought at the time and so I went for a crowdfunding on Indiegogo and my target was $35,000 and I was worried I wouldn't make it but actually astonishingly we got $400,000 over the over the uh, time that the campaign ran it stopped now and um, 
that helped us to get to the stage of getting our tooling design, getting our product design, getting really good. We went from prototype, well, we went from idea to prototype to the beginnings of a product, but then we still had no money really because the money that came in was mainly to pay for helmets that had to go out again, yep. crowdfunding. We made a bit of profit, of course, but then we needed money to run the company properly. And um, I was really stymied, you know, my, my existing shareholders, the guys that put the initial bit of money in, they weren't willing to uh, kind of allow me to go on to Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den asked me three times to go off three years on the trot. They wouldn't, they made it very hard for me to get extra funding. So I had to find a way to buy them out. They doubled their money, so they did very nicely in a, yep. in a very <laughs> difficult market. And then, I, uh, and then I did another crowdfunding on Cedars, but this time it was equity. So I was selling equity in the company into, uh, to, to get investment. And we had a target there of £600,000, which is what we felt we needed in order to take the company from the embryo stage it was to hopefully a huge helmet company. Yeah. Um, and we actually raised a million pounds. So, and then stopped the campaign because every penny we raise is more dilution for the existing yeah. shareholders. So we stopped at a million. So we've got, thank God, we've got plenty of money at the moment. So we're now working on some, a Mark II model and a Mark III model and a children's model and some really exciting electronics. I mean, we've got so many things in the bag and patents and so on. So we're hopefully going to stay, well, just way ahead of the curve yeah. and um, keep designing these beautiful helmets. To give you one quick example of changes, I mean, this is this is the inside we're using now, and this is how it started life. So the change you can see is enormous, and um, we've had to make a lot of these changes to make yeah. it work properly. This is a very soft plastic, and it, it just didn't really do the job properly. We couldn't get the clips to work properly, but now we're kind of on this. Um, and we continue sort of just innovating little bits as we find problems or as we find ways to improve the helmet. It happens. And it's so, it's just so simple. And it works so well. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, and then in terms of, uh, it's, it's already available online, I believe, is that right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Uh, so if, if someone sees these and they're intrigued, where would they go to, to pick well, one up? Well, I'd say that the best place to get it actually is moreforhelmet.com, which is our online site. Uh, we should be on Amazon soon. We're just going through the process of becoming a fulfilled by Amazon product, so we should be on there as well. I'm not that keen on getting into most mass market retailers in the high street. Um, only because it's very complex from a logistics point of view. We're only a small company. It's very expensive for us because we have to give away enormous margins to retailers. Um, and this way we can keep the cost of the helmet down to a reasonable level. And uh, I mean, it's fantastic the way the supply chain works now. We've got it all beautifully done so that if you order it today, um, tomorrow it will be sent by courier from Hong Kong and you'll have it within a few days. I mean, very, yeah, very quick good. and simple process. Um, so, get it. Um, so, what sort of price point would people be looking at for this? Um, the price at the moment is um, it's 149 US dollars um, delivered worldwide by courier, so it's free delivery effectively. Um, and that translates, I guess, if we're talking in sterling to about Depending on the day and the exchange rate, somewhere between 115 and 120 pounds sterling, including delivery. So um, it's a you know it's a good price. Yeah, we feel. Yeah. For yeah. What you're getting. Mm. Excellent. Well, no, it's a, it's a lovely little product. I think it can offer a lot in terms of um, really helping the market with people who are picking up those rental bikes, picking up uh, the dockless bikes and that sort of thing in particular. Mm. People who are commuting in and out of the city and need to have something they can put away discreetly into their laptop bag or their luggage. And then there's other areas as well that we didn't even mention. Either. Wherever helmets are, sort of, wherever spaces are the premium. So campers, caravanners, yes. people who just go away with a load of bikes. You know, that helmets take up an enormous amount of space. So yes. this helps to keep them uh, uh, yeah, more confined into a smaller space. Um, so I believe you've won quite a few different awards from people like including Time, I believe. I'm so lucky, actually. Yes, it's. I mean, it's won an amazing amount of awards. It won something from T3 magazine, from the British Invention Show. We won a platinum award for the best invention. But then late, and that was all in prototype. But later on, we won the Edison Gold Award for the best innovation. We won the Popular Science Safety Innovation of the Year, which was a huge thing. Popular Science is the oldest and biggest science magazine, uh, American based. We won uh, Time, last year we won the Time magazine. We were 
in their top 25 inventions, that's all we're doing. We were the second in the in, in, in their top 25 in the list. We've won a Brussels Eureka Award. I mean, there have just been so many. Oh, oh yeah, we won a massive award at last year's um, Taipei Bike Show, which is the biggest bike show in Asia. Um, it's enormous, probably the biggest in the world actually, or certainly up there with them. And we won their design, IF Design Award. We've just gone in for an award at Eurobike, and I think they're judging it today actually, so okay. we'll, we'll know what happens there. Um, it's been, we've got through to the final, I know that, so we'll see what happens there, but that's, you know, it's really exciting that we're winning these awards, because these are people that understand innovation, understand helmets, understand safety, and they're looking at this with a really critical eye, and it's just nice to get that. It kind of means the product, you know, it's just an added, ben, uh, yeah. you know, added, uh, Proof that the product's, you know, a good product. Yeah, uh, yeah. Get near with it and it just catches and that's fully fastened like that. And then to undo it, you only need one hand, you can even do it with gloves on, just slide it like that. So it's a very innovative and great catch. Then the other things to bear in mind I was talking about are the kind of, you can see in here the dog tooth crenellations, how they're all opposite each other um, in there. And um, so when the helmet closes, and we've got that feature throughout the, the uh, EPS on the helmet, it closes like that, and all of those basically meld together, which is what keeps the helmet with such a thin profile. The materials as well are just like a normal helmet. We've got polycarbonate on the outside, um, EPS or expanded polystyrene on the inside, um, and uh, within that we've got the butterfly that piece I showed you which is this piece here is molded within all of that so you can't see it but it's molded in there and that's what gives it the structural integrity that it needs to hold all these 14 panels together.